Hello, this is part three of our manufacturing of the cross halving joint. Last task you did the marking out of the two halves and uh, now we are going to cut it out. We are going to cut it out with precision and accuracy. As you can see this cross halving joint you don't even need to uh, glue it. Yeah, it's quite tight and uh, nice. For that, um, we are going to take two things into consideration. First is where do I cut it? Inside the line, on the line or outside of the line? Yes, I should cut inside the line and inside the line here. Always leaving the line visible to guide us and it tells us when to stop. If I cut outside of the line or in the line, our cut would be the 20 millimeters, that is the width of the button, plus the thickness of the blade. Then it wouldn't be 20 anymore. It would be if this is 2 millimeters thick, it would be 22. And I wouldn't end up with a joint as nice as this one. Another point to take into consideration and is how I hold the tenon saw and how I cut it. Um, I hold the tenon saw with your finger point forwards and why is that? It gives us direction and control of the cut. Another point to take into consideration is how I start the cut. If I place the blade straight on the side of the timber, uh, the teeth of the blade is going to be stuck uh, in the grain. Then I start, as I mentioned before, I demonstrated before, in an angle, and the movement is always towards us. Until I create a little groove, and once I have that initial groove, I start to bring the blade of the tenosaur down until I form a groove all along the line. Okay, let's start then. This is what we had, the uh, two pieces of timber marked out. For this task, we are going to use the bench hook to give us support. I place the bench hook in the device. I place my timber against the bench hook. I match my cutting line along this side of the bench hook and hold it firmly and I start my cut. Start in an angle, trying to find a groove. Always the movement towards you. You see? As you feel comfortable, start bringing the blade of the tenon saw down. You're supposed to end up with uh, a line along the section. I, can you see? I still can see my line. Remember, then you can always file off if you did a bit too small. Let's start here. Uh, it's easier because it's a, a pine. It's easier if you just bring the blade towards you. But keep checking both sides. Keep checking both sides, yes, uh, to know where to stop. I turn my piece of wood to the other side until I, I match the line to the side of the bench hook. Again, I start in an angle. 30 degrees, slowly I bring my blade uh, down until I have a form proof. Remember, keep looking at both sides. It's easier if you bring the saw just towards you because this, the saws are new and the teeth are very sharp. Double check is not there yet. Double check, almost there. This side is okay, this side is not okay. Yes, I, I reached the line that I'm, I'm, where I must stop. Now, the next step is to take all this area away um, and uh, one method that we could use today is to create 
three lines here and make three cuts there with the tenon saw and until this line here it's going to be easier to have a nice finish using the chisel. For that you can just get three lines, doesn't need to be equals, make a three lines with the tenon saw and uh, let's start. The first one again the, the, is an angle. Can you see the wood is already being removed with this movement. Just make sure you fit your hands in the, the right place. Next line to the direction towards my body. Double check both sides, yes, is there. The third line now. Okay, double check, almost there. You need to be patient, keep checking, otherwise you'll go over the lines. It's better to stop before than go over, otherwise you change the measurements. All right, can you see? I end up with uh, uh, free cuts like that. Now, uh, when I, I use the chisel, I, I apply the chisel in this direction, it uh, removes this uh, uh, instantly. Uh, when you work with the chisel, always, this is the sharp end, always work away from your body. You might have a thinner chisel or a bit wider, the blade a bit wider. Can you see this is almost the size? I'm going to use the smaller one because we cut the wood this way. Uh, you don't even need the mallet. Usually, you use the mallet to hit the chisel. We don't start cutting uh, with the chisel straight on the line. We go at stages. It will be one stage here, second stage, then the third stage. It's called pairing. I place my piece of wood there, I could just gently use my other hand. And the good thing, the slots that we created, the, the, the wood doesn't crack. It breaks at the, that line, naturally. All right, I'm going to use the chisel. Can you see? First stage. First stage. Second stage, now the final stage. Here, this side I can turn around because this is lower. Here, if it was all like this, I could just use the file, but I'm turning around to get a bit closer to the line. Okay, it's a bit better. Be patient. Okay, let's check. Yes, I just uh, stopped above the line. Either you use the file, this stage you could use the file. Uh, you place the uh, piece of uh, wood there and slowly to fight this out. Be careful with your fingers by the, the, this corner here. Just take your time. Remember, you have to keep the file parallel to the surface. You see, it's getting better. Nice and smooth. Can you see? I can't make sure it's parallel to the edge. Do I not know? Not a pass. Okay. 
Okay, this is done. Now I have to have the same procedure for the other side. How did we start? We start the tendon saw in an angle, and as we get the groove, you start to lower the blade of the tendon saw. You obviously you have it on the bench hook. Align the line with the side of the bench hook. Turn the timber around. Align this with the bench hook. Once you have uh, these two lines, I trace three more lines. One, two, three. I'm going to have make three slots with tenon saw, making sure I'm looking and stopping the right place. This will be easier for us to use the chisel. Uh, you place the chisel against the bench hook. Remember to always keep the, the tools in the middle of the table, don't leave the, the tools uh, at the edge of the table. Wear your goggles all the time, you should have your apron on, and now is your turn.